Hello, in this video we're going to look at perfect substitutes. So a utility function with perfect substitutes will take this standard form, where utility equals a times x plus b times y. a is going to represent the marginal utility of good x. b will represent the marginal utility of good y. If you're using calculus, these will just be their respective partial derivatives. The partial derivative of the utility function with respect to x will just get the value in front of x. Likewise, a partial derivative of the utility function with respect to y will just get the value in front of y here, in this case, b. Uh, the utility function is linear in both x and y. That is a property of perfect substitutes. The marginal rate of substitution is going to be constant. So the marginal rate of substitution is constant for a perfect substitutes utility function. That is, it does not depend on the values of good x and good y. And the marginal rate of substitution will just be a divided by a divided by b, which is the marginal utility of good x divided by the marginal utility of good y. The slope of the indifference curves are linear and slope downwards. They have a negative slope. And the vertical intercept of this indifference curve will be utility divided by b. So if utility is 20 and b is 2, the vertical intercept will be 20 divided by 2 or 10. And the horizontal intercept will be given as u divided by a. So examples of consumer goods that may be perfect substitutes, blue socks and black socks. A person may always be willing to trade off one pair of blue socks for one pair of black socks, regardless of his endowment of either blue or black socks. Blue ink pens and black ink pens. A person uh, doesn't care which color ink they write in. Maybe Pepsi and Coca-Cola for some consumers are perfect substitutes. Uh, maybe coffee and tea. And one thing I'll point out here in this last example, a person may always be willing to trade off one cup of coffee for two cups of tea, regardless of his or her endowment of coffee and tea. So the trade-off doesn't always have to be one for one. Okay, In this case, this person is always willing to make this trade-off of one cup of coffee for two cups of tea. So the trade-off does not always have to be one for one for perfect substitutes, but it must be constant and not dependent on the consumer's level of good X and good Y. So let's do a few examples. Example one, utility equals X plus Y. Again, this is in the format of perfect substitutes. The marginal utility of X is just A, or the value in front of X, which is one. The mar marginal utility of Y is the value in front of Y, which is just one. And so that's our marginal utilities. The marginal rate of substitution is just a ratio of these marginal utilities, and it equals 1. And one thing to notice here, the variables x and y do not enter the marginal rate of substitution. The marginal rate of substitution will always be constant. And as far as an interpretation goes, the consumer is always willing to trade off one unit of good y for one unit of good x, holding utility constant. Example 2, utility equals 2x plus 3y, another example of perfect substitutes. x and y are entering this utility function in a linear manner. The marginal utility of good x is a, which is 2. The marginal utility of good y is b, which is 3 in this case. Forming the marginal rate of substitution, we get 2 thirds. As for an interpretation, the consumer is always willing to trade off 2 thirds of a unit of good y for one more unit of good x holding utility constant, or we could also write the consumer is always willing to trade off two units of good y for three units of good x, holding utility constant. And example three, utility equals 4x plus 2y, marginal utility of good x, marginal utility of good y, the marginal rate of substitution. Here the consumer is always willing to trade off two units of good y for one unit of good x, holding utility constant. All right. Um, last thing I want to do is I want to take this utility function and I want to graph an indifference curve for u equals 20. I already showed it down. I'm already showing it down here, but how do we get that? 
Well, what did I say before? We said that the vertical intercept is u divided by b. So in this case, u, for the indifference curve where u equals 20, uh, we're going to have 20 divided by b, or the marginal utility of good y. And so the vertical intercept is 20, and that's what I have down here, units of good y. The indifference curve intersects at 20 units of good y. And for the horizontal intercept, it's going to be u divided by a. So in this case, the indifference curve is associated with 20 units of utility. So 20 divided by a, which is 4. We get an answer of 5. So the horizontal intercept here is 5 for units of good x. And that is our um, indifference curve, downward sloping uh, straight line. And as for the marginal rate of substitution, uh, it's just going to be a divided by b. Marginal utility of x divided by the marginal utility of good y. It's just 4. And you'll also notice that this marginal rate of substitution is the absolute value of the slope of this indifference curve. 20 divided by 5 is 4. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.